Hey, future nurses. Today, we're diving into the crucial skill that you'll need in labor and delivery. We're talking about interpreting fetal heart rate patterns. We'll be exploring veal chop mnemonic, a powerful tool that'll help you understand what's happening with your tiny patients during labor. So let's get started. First, let's talk about why we monitor fetal heart rates. It's all about ensuring the baby is getting enough oxygen during labor. You see, a normal fetal heart rate ranges between 110 to 260 beats per minute, with some natural variations. Monitoring can be done externally using an ultrasound, or it can be done internally with a thin wire attached to the baby's scalp. By tracking these patterns, we can make informed decisions about potential interventions while also avoiding unnecessary treatments. Now, let's break down our star mnemonic, veal chop. Each letter pair represents a type of heart change and its potential cause. So V is for variable decelerations, E is for early decelerations, A is for accelerations, and L is for late D cells or decelerations. Now let's explore each one in detail. So VEAL stands for variable decelerations, often caused by cord compression. These are unpredictable drops in the heart rate that could indicate the baby's blood supply is limited due to the umbilical cord issues. Possible causes include the mother and baby positioning, knots or entanglement of that actual cord, low amniotic fluid, uterine rupture, and even cord prolapse. Management might involve repositioning the mother, administering IV fluids, or giving oxygen, or even preparing for a potential C-section. Now moving on to E. E is for early decelerations, typically due to head compression. These occur when the heart rate slows progressively before contraction peaks. It's common in late labor as the baby descends through the birth canal. While it's usually not harmful, changing the mother's position can help alleviate pressure and improve oxygen flow. Now what about A? A stands for accelerations, which are generally okay. These are temporary increases in the heart rate of 15 beats per minute or more, lasting at least 15 seconds. Now, these are good signs, indicating the baby is getting enough oxygen. So if accelerations aren't happening naturally, we might try to trigger them by gently rocking the mother's abdomen or using sound stimulation. Now, moving on to L, this represents late D cells or decelerations, often due to placental insufficiency. This is the most concerning pattern where the heart rate decreases with those D cells after contraction for 30 seconds or more. It suggests that the baby might not be getting enough oxygen through the placenta. So immediate interventions might include repositioning of the mother, providing oxygen, or preparing for an emergency C-section if the issue persists. So understanding these patterns is crucial for providing safe care during labor and delivery. The veal chop mnemonic gives you a quick way to recall different heart rate changes and their potential causes, allowing you to act swiftly when needed. So there you have it, fetal heart rate monitoring made simple. Keep practicing and you'll be able to interpret fetal heart rate patterns like a pro. Make sure you check out the blog right here to get a condensed overview of this topic. And remember, this skill can help you save lives in the delivery room. So don't be scared, be prepared. Thanks so much for watching and be sure to click the link. I'll see you there.